The video produced by the fourth Sayyid hints at the various ways mass media is used to wage psychological warfare on the public. Here's a look at this symbolic video and the strange occult history of Sayyid's. The goal of Sayyip is, essentially, to mess with people's minds. Appropriately enough, a recent recruitment video by the 4th Sayyip group accomplished just that. Posted on the official social media accounts associated with the US military, the video titled Ghosts in the Machine gained some viral traction as viewers were impressed with the video's production quality while being baffled by its overarching message and symbolism. What does it all mean? To better understand this video, let's look at the fascinating yet secretive world of Psyops. Psyops stands for Psychological Operations. It can be defined as planned psychological activities using methods of communications and other means directed to approved audiences in order to influence perceptions, attitudes, and behavior, affecting the achievement of political and military objectives. When books describe psyops, they often refer to World War I-era strategies, such as dropping leaflets from a plane to demoralize the enemy. That era is long gone. Psyops moved way beyond these primitive methods to adopt highly sophisticated techniques, utilizing the latest technologies and the immense power of mass media. But that is not all. There was always a magical supernatural element to psyops. These allusions to magic are not merely figurative. Psyops extensively researched occult and supernatural phenomenons, such as ESP, or extrasensory perception, and remote viewing. This symbiotic relationship between Psyops and the occult is fully personified by an important yet controversial figure. Michael Aquino. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update and watch to the end to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Michael Aquino joined the U.S. Army in 1968, where he became an officer specializing in psychological warfare and, later, a lieutenant colonel in military intelligence. As Aquino climbed the ranks of the U.S. military, he also climbed the ranks of another organization, the Church of Satan. Michael Aquino began corresponding with Anton Levy, while a psychological operative for the U.S. Army, stationed in the jungles of Vietnam. Aquino returned to the States and was soon made a high-ranking priest and editor of the church's Cloven Hoof newsletter. His distinctive appearance, he sported a prominent widow's peak and darkly accented eyebrows, was further enhanced by a small 666 tattooed on his scalp. Washington Post, a devil of a time. This photo shows Aquino doing satanic things. As years passed, the relationship between Aquino and Levy deteriorated. The main reason is, Levy believed that Satan was a symbolic force, while Aquino believed in the literal existence of Satan. In 1975, Aquino founded the Temple of Set, an occult order that revolved around an Egyptian deity on whom the Hebraic Satan was supposedly based. Aquino's occult activities did not interfere with his military career. In fact, he described politics and propaganda as forms of lesser black magic. Aquino divided black magic into two forms. Lesser black magic and greater black magic. He stated that lesser black magic entails impelling things that exist in the objective universe into doing a desired act by using obscure physical or behavioral laws and into this category. He placed stage magic, psychodramas, politics, and propaganda. Jesper Agard, The Seeds of Satan, Conceptions of Magic and Contemporary Satanism. In 1980, as a Psyop research and analysis team leader, Aquino co-authored Mind War, an internal U.S. Army paper about the future of psychological operations. While this document was only intended for the eyes of government policymakers, it accidentally became public and it caused quite a stir. Is the government involved in invasion of the mind beyond the blundering haphazard legacy of the infamous MKUltra experiments? Even more unsettling, do such efforts extend beyond conventional scientific research to dark and arcane arts whose very existence is the stuff of legend? Mind War Book Description The least one can say is that Mind War was visionary. 
It accurately predicted the fourth generation of warfare, which focuses on bypassing armies in order to attack population, culture, and institutions. And the best way to accomplish this was, of course, through mass media. In its strategic context, Mind War must reach out to friends, enemies, and neutrals alike across the world, neither through primitive battlefield leaflets and loudspeakers of Syed, nor through the weak imprecise and narrow effort of psychotronics, but through the media possessed by the United States, which have the capabilities to reach virtually all people on the face of the earth. These media are, of course, the electronic media, television and radio state-of-the-art developments in wireless communication, video recording techniques, and laser and optical transmission of broadcasts make possible a penetration of the minds of the world, such as would have been inconceivable just a few years ago. Michael A. Aquino and Paul E. Valley, Mind War. The ultimate goal of Mind War is to make people willingly do what they're supposed to do, while not realizing they've been pushed towards that decision at every step of the way. For the mind to believe in its own decisions, it must feel that it made those decisions without coercion. Coercive measures used by the operative, consequently, must not be detectable by ordinary means. There is no need to resort to mind-weakening drugs such as those explored by the CIA, in fact the exposure of a single such method would do unacceptable damage to Mind War's reputation for truth. Ibid. Towards the end of this short document, Aquino goes way beyond mass media. He states that PSYOPs must make full use of phenomena such as electromagnetic fields and extremely low frequency waves, or ELFs, to make people more suggestible to mind war. There are some purely natural conditions under which minds may become more or less receptive to ideas, and mind war should take full advantage of such phenomena as atmospheric activity, air ionization, and extremely low frequency waves. The LF waves up to 100 Hz are naturally occurring, but they can be produced artificially, such as for the Navy's Project Sanguine for submarine communication. The LF waves are not normally noticed by the unaided senses, yet their resonant effect upon the human body has been connected to both physiological disorders and emotional distortion. Infrasound vibration, up to 20 Hz, can subliminally influence brain activity to align itself to delta, theta, alpha, or beta wave patterns, inclining an audience toward everything from alternates to passivity. Infrasound could be used tactically, as ELF waves endure for great distances, and it could be used in conjunction with media broadcasts as well. Ibid. You've heard correctly. Aquino stated that ELS can be used in conjunction with media broadcasts. With all of that being said, let's take another look at this IAP recruitment video. The recruitment video by the 4th SIAP group revolves around the saying, all the world's a stage, a quote from William Shakespeare, which compares the world to a play and people to actors. However, in the context of SIAP, this quote takes on a deeper meaning. Many of the events we see around the world are staged and choreographed by unseen puppet masters. Appropriately enough, the video begins with the words. Have you ever wondered who's pulling the strings? This creepy figure appears throughout the video without revealing himself. However, his silhouette looks familiar. Left, creepy figure. Right, Aquino. The video subtly hints at the various battlefields of Syap using clever shots. Warfare is evolving, and all the world's a stage. In the background, we see images of people filming propaganda, and a person playing the piano. Because the music industry is involved in psychological warfare. The video features multiple scenes of people scrolling their phones, because Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google, Reddit and others, are mind war battlefields. An old-timey cartoon shows a bumbling clown being revealed as a ghost, aka a spook. The message of this highly symbolic image is, your ridiculous entertainers are actually agents of propaganda. This screenshot shows a clown-like entertainer, similar to one seen in the cartoon, gets ready to perform, as the words we come in many forms are displayed. This is a shot of an empty movie theater indicates that the entertainment industry is fully involved in psychological warfare against citizens. Throughout the video, we see images of protests and political movements. 
The message of these scenes is, these events did not happen organically, they were the result of psychological warfare. As Aquino wrote, for the mind to believe in its own decisions, it must feel that it made those decisions without coercion. Ghosts in the Machine is a cleverly made recruitment video that appears to target a specific audience. Conspiracy-minded people who want to take part in the conspiracy. Through various symbolic scenes, the video explains how the 4th PSYOP group uses psychological warfare to defend American interests in foreign conflicts, especially those involving China and Russia. With that being said, a vital question begs to be asked. The psychological warfare used against American citizens and allied countries. At the time of PSYOP's inception, laws were created to prevent the military from conducting psychological warfare on U.S. citizens. However, Aquino himself observed that the 2003 Iraq invasion was preceded by an extreme mind war on American people. While it is possible that the 4th PSYOP group is focused on foreign adversaries, psychological warfare is currently being used by all kinds of state and non-state actors. In the 21st century, globalist forces control mass media and political parties. As such, this powerful elite group has been conducting an unprecedented mind war effort to attack population, culture, and institutions. It is happening right before our eyes. All the world's a stage. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this. They have done a lot for us all. And thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.